Hey everybody, it's Robert C. Stern with The Social Leader. Uh, excuse my voice, I'm fighting a really bad cold, but I was not missing out and transferring this date to speak with Mr. Duck, as I like to call him, the duck, the duck man himself. Chris Ducker is here from the Philippines. We figured yes. out the time ratios that we were able to do this, that everybody can be involved. And uh, we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about business, about what's going on in his life and everything else. So if you have a question, if you're in the blab with us, or, or as Ivan, I see in the chat, likes to go, the mother ducker. <laughs> the mother ducker. That's, that's the clean version of Ivan. That's, that's, I actually spent a bit of time with Ivan uh, in Philadelphia in September. He is he's was one that, of my that, uh, members. Was yeah, that the, um, the thing I saw you running up the steps like Rocky? Yeah, no, it's so white. So, okay, so that <laughs> so good. Um, so I, I have, I'm, I'm a massive Rocky fan. I have been ever since I was a teenager. And I always said, and I remember actually saying to my late mum on a number of occasions, one day, mum, I'm running up those steps like Rocky. One day I'm going to do it. And I'm going to have that music in my head when I'm doing it. And uh, I finally got the chance to be in Philadelphia for a speaking engagement. I was uh, keynoting Aweber's conference. And um, the day after we did our little Youpreneur members meetup, which is where Ivan comes in, there was about <laughs> five or six of us there. Um, I had the day free before I had to fly out um, uh, to Phoenix. And so I said to my wife, we got to do something. We need to go to that museum and I need to run up those steps. And you're going to film it from a number of different angles on the phone. And then I'm going to get my VA to cut it to the music. And uh, we did it. And there's like a 30 second clip up on my Facebook uh, profile. If I'm not friends with anybody, just request me. I'll approve you. And you can check it out. So it's a 30 second clip of me running up at a number of, the, I actually ran those stairs four times to get all those different angles. I was bloody knackered at the end of it. Because <laughs> I'm not the fittest bloke in the world, obviously. And um, it was great. We had a great time. And he's watching it. There he is, guys. Chris Ducker himself. Can you not share your screen? Blab is so like media rich. Can you share the screen or anything? Or not can't? yet. They're working on it. There you go. I had get to get it, it on done. for you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I finally got the chance to do it, man. And uh, it was everything that I expected plus a bag It of was chips funny because I saw it on Friday after we spoke. I think you put right. it up Friday night or Saturday yes. morning or whatever. And then yeah, I'm yeah, sitting yeah. there going, wait a minute. We're doing Is he this in Philly? Is he in Philly? <laughs> right. Because I'm only about an hour and a half, three, maybe two and a half hours away from Philly. Okay. So I'm okay. sitting there going, if he's here... I'll just go meet him. <laughs> I love it. It was, it was, it was, uh, you know, I don't get the chance. I, I, you know, when I, the thing is, you know, when I'm, when I'm in the United States, which is usually two or three times a year, but when I'm there, I'm speaking, right? I'm usually event speaking. And they usually happen to be either New York or LA or somewhere within those vicinities. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. Right. So this is my second time in the Philadelphia. The first time I was there, I was in and out in one day for a speaking gig. So this time around, we had a little bit of extra time. And I was like, I'm so doing those steps this time. <laughs> and uh, it was great. And my wife, actually, this is how cool my wife is. She actually went out the morning of and brought me a, uh, a a gray hoodie to sort of look the part a little bit in the video. So I didn't have that hoodie with me. The missus went out and bought that when she ran out to grab some coffee in the morning. That's I had no so idea. Funny. And I was that like, so oh, she's funny. awesome. Yeah, she's awesome. All right. So let's get down to business. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do, you know, listen, you've, you've got an interesting career going on. I mean, you know, since 2008, you know, building up on Twitter and you kind of had a little bit of a brick and mortar, if I'm not mistaken. Still do. And, Still and do. it's grown. Yeah. I mean, in 2008, we would have had about 100 employees. Now we were just what about it do? to what, what exactly does it do for so, those that don't know? So, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the brick and mortar part of my empire, for want of a better term. <laughs> um, that, that is, so it's a corporate call center. We work with corporate clients all over the world. The stronghold being in the US, the UK, and Australia. <laughs> And um, basically, we serve them with things like customer service, technical support, 
outbound lead generation calls and things like that. Um, we're now we're about to eclipse 450 employees at that business. So, wow. but, here, but the beautiful thing is that I don't run that business anymore. I have people that do it for me. So I'm the owner. I'm the all out owner of the business. I have zero partners, but I have great management and I take care of my management. They're all on profit share and things like that. And so, um, yeah, I work probably on average two hours a week on that business. Well, and, that's what uh, I wanted to lead into yeah. because that's where this uh, uh, epiphany, shall we say, came into gear. I guess it was about 2010 when it yep. started to click in your head and yep. you went, I'm, wor I, I'm working too hard. Yeah. Yeah. It was the end of 2009. I burned out. Yeah. So I hit a brick wall, literally, right? Like so many entrepreneurs do. And what happened was uh, I was actually ad admitted to hospital. I had ex acute exhaustion and depression. I was clinically diagnosed as depressed. Okay. Um, and even though I was making some good money, and we at that point, like I said, we were at about 100, uh, going into the end of 2009, about 120, 130 employees were a seven-figure business at that point, making good money. But I was working stupid hours, Rob. I was doing like 60 hours, 70 hours a week for that's, that's a good- me now. <laughs> yeah, for a good three, three, four years. Now, look, don't get me wrong. At first, I enjoyed doing those long hours because you're hustling, you're grinding out, you're doing your thing, and I get it. But then, you know, really for that last year, I really started to despise my business. I despised having to be sitting behind a desk for 12, 13, 14 hours a day on average, um, missing out on weekends, missing out on social activities during the week and the evenings and all that sort of stuff. Kids. And I did, honestly, I burned, I, I burned out. It sucked. It, and and it you miss out on your family and your kids. Exactly. And that was the big thing for me because I'm, I'm, anybody that knows me truly knows that family is the most important thing to me and yeah. nothing will ever eclipse it. And so... Man, I, you know, going into 2010, I said, I got to make changes. I need to remove myself. I need to take myself out of this thing as much as I possibly can. And that's when the whole kind of virtual CEO goal came into place. And uh, since then, everything else has kind of blossomed and, and, and boomed for me. The good news is that I have not, I have not enabled myself. Sorry, I have not put myself into a position where I'm going to get sucked back into that business. Um, and we now have three different business entities all under the same kind of, you know, umbrella of companies. Right. And uh, obviously, I do all the stuff that I do online with the blog and the podcast and Youpreneur and all that sort of stuff as well now. So it, it I, I'm blessed, man. I mean, but it wasn't always like this. I, I say, you know, the, the overnight success has been 12 years coming. <laughs> Hey, they 12. always say it takes 10 years to become an overnight success. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> So, you know, doing a little research and, and, and one of the things that I loved, and I think this came out of your 2010 thing, was your three lists to freedom. Yes. So I this... love it because I do something similar in the okay. social media side of it. All right. I handle just social media for people and things like that. But when I saw this and I, and I'm, and I was watching your video and I was like, oh, my God. He needs to explain this to everybody tonight that's coming on here because the three right. lists of freedom can be used in so many aspects of your life. It's not just business if you think about it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, so, so, you know, honestly, this was the catalyst, you know, going into 2010. We, we actually, me and my wife, we went to a resort for, uh, between Christmas and New Year 2009. And the catalyst was, you know what, we, you know, like when you're at, you know, these resorts or a hotel, you've got little notepads all over the place and at the bar and by the bed and all that sort of stuff. And long story short, I was writing all these notes and these, and it was basically all the stuff that I hated doing or I was struggling doing, or I felt that, you know, as the business owner that I was, ultimately I shouldn't be doing, I should be on more sort of more, you know, higher level type activities. And I didn't know at the time, but I was creating what was going to become when I wrote Virtual Freedom, the book, when I wrote that book, I needed to give it a cool name, right? So I called mm -hmm. it The Three Lists to Freedom. And we put that at the beginning of the book and it pops up four or five times throughout the case of the book as well. Um, and uh, yeah, honestly, man, it was uh, a game changer. So basically what you do is you you get a piece of paper, right? Sure, Chris. <laughs> you go, just like that. Good boy, you've done your homework, good man. I told um, you. And 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 you you draw two 
lines down it, you create three columns. The first column is a list of all the things on a day-to-day -day basis that you just hate doing. Like the thought of it, you know, makes you vomit. You know, like you just don't want to do these tasks. And you procrastinate on those tasks all day long. But then at the end of the day, you're going to rush doing them, probably screwing them up half the time or not doing them as well as you could because your business demands them of you day to day, right? So that's the first list, list of all the things you hate doing. Second list, a list of all the things that you can't do or that you struggle doing. Now, the problem with this is that we believe as entrepreneurs that we're the masters of our own little universe. I call this superhero syndrome, where nobody is stronger than us. We can defeat everybody, and we don't need any help at all. Now, that's obviously BS, but in our own little worlds, we don't accept that. And we think that, well, hell, if I can spend an entire weekend learning how to you know, rip a piece of PHP code to bits and screwing it up in the process before <laughs> paying somebody 50 bucks to do it for me perfectly the first time round, I'm going to do that. That, right. Or, right. you know, I'm not a graphic designer, but hell, I'll learn how to use Photoshop over a period of nine hours and then screw up a logo design just because I can just pay a bloody graphic designer. You know what I mean? So that was the second list, a list of all the things that you can't do or that you struggle doing. And then the third one was by far the most important for me because it really forced me to sit down and figure out exactly how I was running my business. The funny thing is, and I've done this exercise with literally thousands of business owners now over the course of the last few years, live on webinars, podcasts, you name it, right? Thousands of people have done this. And the funny thing is I've seen this over and over and over again. This final column, generally speaking, there is never any more than three or four items on this list. The other two lists far outweigh, right. far outweigh this one. But it's easily the most important one because it gets you thinking about what you're doing inside your business every day. And that is a list of all the things that you feel as the business owner that you are, you shouldn't actually be doing. There's a big difference. And the reason why, and it takes you back to list one and two, it takes you back because number one, you might actually enjoy doing some of these tasks, right? And number two, you might actually be really, really good at doing some of these tasks. But the question, again, is should you be doing them or should you be spending more time on more high-level activities? And that's well, really well, goes the three list of freedom back, right there. It goes back to, goes back to you want you to want do 80% of your time, of your time you spent that you do best. Exactly. You have a little exactly. echo on yours. I, I think it's my voice going into your mic. Uh, yeah, because I'm not using a headset. Could that be it, possibly? Yes, it is. That's why is that I gonna irritate? That in. Okay. Well, all right, smarty pants. Hold on. Um, <laughs> I haven't got. I haven't got a bloody headset up here. This is ridiculous. Is it going to irritate you? No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. It comes and goes. I just heard it like all of a sudden, and I went. Okay. Well, what I'll do is when you're when you're speaking, I'll swing that over there. Is that better? Don't worry about it. Okay. I'll edit out. <laughs> Cool. So okay. it's funny because when I saw your three lists of freedom and I went things you have, things you hate to do, things you, you can't do yourself, need help with, and then things you shouldn't do, I do strategy planning on social media. Okay. And I do where you need to set goals as a business person on how you're going to do your social media. So when you set your daily goals or your weekly goals, what are your have tos, what are your mm -hmm. needs, and what are your wants? Because what your wants doesn't always mean it's a priority. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more with you. 100%. So that's why I was laughing when I saw your thing. I'm like, oh, my God, it's just like what I'm doing in this priority, yeah. this strategy thing. I was like, Chris and I think alike. And that's why, you know, that's that's why I love this stuff so much because, you know, gen, you know, genuinely, genuinely, nobody has a monopoly on good ideas. When you're running your own business, nobody has a monopoly on good ideas. So I believe it's so darn important to, um, you know, to talk to other people, to to listen to what people are saying. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I've been in the sales uh, and marketing world ever since I was 17. I quit college to work full time as a telemarketer back in the day. And um, I can honestly say, like, you know, what, one of the things that my sales mentor oh. said to me is, you know, Chris, if you want to be a good sales guy, understand this. 
good salespeople listen twice as much as they talk. Yes. Yeah. And I've never forgotten that. I've never, ever forgotten that. And I, and I convey that when I, when I work with people online, my audience, my community, I'm blessed to have a, you know, a blog that gets over 125,000 unique visitors a month. I'm blessed to have a podcast that has over 350,000 downloads a month. I mean, these are big numbers. They're not to be taken for granted in any way whatsoever. But the reason why those people keep coming back to me over and over again is because I listen to them. When they say they need help with something, if I hear that something enough times, I'm going to create a piece of content to serve those people and to, and, and, and to provide a solution to that problem or an answer to that question. And that's the reason why people come back over and over again, because I genuinely listen to my audience and serve them as best as I can. So, so I can be said in business or anything else. Ivan in our audience said it's a good thing you have 350,000 because 349,000 of those downloads are him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Ivan, the check is in the mail, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So you have, you have uh, uh, some books out and I know Poppy was asking a question and I'm just going to pop this in here so we can, it's not working. This is why I love Vlad. Question. This is so cool. Um, do you have any plans to write another book? Um, I do. Uh, and actually we're in the very, 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 very early stages of writing it. Okay. Um, and when I say writing it, I mean planning it really. Um, it's, it's, it will probably be out. I'm going to say beginning of 2017. Um, and it's going to focus in on what I'm all about now, which is my youpreneur.com mastermind cool. community. Cool. Cool. So youpreneur is basically a community for entrepreneurs that want to build a business around their brand. Okay. So think people like coaches of any kind of industry. We've got health coaches, we've got IT coaches, we've got whatever, right? So coaches, experts, consultants, authors, speakers, bloggers, podcasters, those kind of people, people that want to build a business, a genuine profit generating business based around <laughs> their brand and what they stand for and, and, and who they serve. So this is really my next, uh, you know, when we launched Youpreneur in September, I was saying, this is my next decade. This is my next 10 years. Um, and I still stand by that right now. Uh, this is what I will be focusing on going forward. And the book uh, will be, you know, sort of surrounding that concept and we'll dive deep. We're going to have tons of real life case studies. You're not going to hear about, hardcore online influencers or experts or anything like that and bringing on board real youpreneur members of the community who are literally crushing it people making six figures and way beyond uh, we have several millionaires inside of the community right now who continue to want to learn and better themselves and hang out with the right people so that's what the community does it serves up the you know the learning side of things with our training each month along obviously with the support and the accountability from the community. We've got private forums. Yeah. We don't do a Facebook group. So everything is proprietary. Everything is built internally. And uh, Ryan is a member um, and uh, he's, you know, he's an amazing member, a great contributor to the community. And um, I'm, you know, this is what the next book is going to be about deep diving into this and really showing people that, you know what, if you've got any kind of expertise, if you've been doing any one thing for a certain period of time, this whole 10,000 hour, thing is BS because, um, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk didn't have 10,000 hours of, uh, you know, giving people advice on wine before he started Wine Library TV. Uh, he just happened right. to be running a wine business and wanted to do something different. And that's my biggest message at this moment in time is that being different is better than being better. Truly. I, I truly believe that right now. And I'm Explain all about that, that right now. Depth. Explain that. Well, this is it. You, like you do have to think about it. You've got to think about it a little bit because a lot of people say, well, you know what? I am a, I'm a financial coach. I coach people on how to, you know, not only make more money, but then put that money to work for them. That's what I do. I'm a financial coach. My competitor down the, down the road here at blah, blah, blah dot com, he's also a financial coach. I want to be better than him. No, you don't, mate. You want to be different. You want to stand out. 
You want to be different to that person. If that person's got a blog and a podcast, you start a video show where at the beginning of every show, you tell a joke on money to stand out. You be different. Being different is better than being better. Being different will make you get remembered easier. Being different will ultimately, I believe, enable you to build a much stronger a brand with a much more long-term approach to building a business around that brand. So I'm all about being different, not better. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's funny because in the social media space, I'm always I'm saying, always, don't be part, don't of, the be part of the noise. Yeah, so yeah. Just because everybody's out doesn't, doesn't mean you have you to also. also. Right, you will, exactly. Right? Exactly. You do something similar that works, but change it up and be different. Exactly. And like I said, you know, nobody's got a monopoly on good ideas, right? Mm -hmm. So when you surround yourself with good people, different people, they bring so much to the party. I mean, they really do. And I'm just, you know, I'm just the babysitter of this, of this particular community of this, this drive. I, I learn just as much from my members as they yep. do from me because nobody's got a monopoly on good ideas. That's why I love doing all the live events that I do, Rob, because it allows me to spend time with these people in person. You know, the mastermind events I do, the, you know, the, the slightly larger conferences that I do and all that sort of stuff. I love all that. So uh, I'm all about just trying to help as, ma as many people as I can in that regard. But yes, there is in a roundabout way, really long answer to a very easy question. Yes, there's another book coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one of the things I want to ask you is because obviously you've had a lot of success. You, you built this call center up and then you, you, and Matt, this kind of answers your, what was your aha moment? Um, he kind of answered a little bit that, you know, he was doing the, the brick and mortar and it just took over his life and you just needed to change the way you were doing things. It wasn't that you didn't love what you did. You just needed to change it to make the love come back again. Yeah, that's and right. I mean, I, I, I was still enjoying running the business, having a team serving customers, but I had started to um, despise the fact that I was not working on my business. My business was working me. And there was a big difference. You know, I, I definitely was not, I was not running my business. My business is running me. It's probably a better way to put it. Um, and uh, I did. I It hurt, man. I'm not going to BS. When I hit that brick wall in 20, uh, 2009, it really hurt. It was a big wake-up call. That was a catalyst. That was the aha moment for sure. And then actually, middle of 2012, I had another aha moment where I'd been blessed to build somewhat of a community online. Um, and... Uh, I was blogging at, at the URL Virtual Business Lifestyle, which sounded very kind of four-hour work week and everything when I started it. And uh, I guess I kind of rode on those uh, coattails for a while of Tim's for a bit. Um, and, you know, I did. I built up this brand. But the thing was, nobody ever said, go to Virtual Business Lifestyle. Nobody ever said, download the Virtual Business Lifestyle podcast. They would always say, go to Chris Ducker's blog or go mm -hmm. to Chris Ducker's podcast. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to revamp everything. And mid-2012 mid is when I launched ChrisDucker.com. I transferred everything over from VirtualBusinessLifestyle.com to ChrisDucker.com. And I made a decision there and then to focus entirely on uh, everything that I was doing online would be based around my own name and my personal brand. And that was where everything just kind of... <laughs> I mean, it just blew up like six months, you know, six months down, down the, the line, I get a book deal, then, you know, speaking career just, I mean, I was already speaking, but the speaking career just blew up. It blew up. Um, I get so many invites now to speak. I, I, I mean, I can't do it because I'm over here, but if I was in the United States so living way, there, <laughs> I, I could, yeah. I mean, I could, I could literally, he, I could literally speak five times a month if I was living in America. That's how many invites I get. But it's just, it's not possible, obviously. So yeah, I'm a big fan of, of the whole, and a big advocate of the whole personal brand. I think it's important for anybody to have some sort of a personal brand element to their business. So you've had so a lot of success. Lot of success. You, you, you build up your call uh, uh, center. Uh, you built up your, your, your opener. Tell me one that didn't work. So there was a business <laughs> called... There was a, there was a like, business. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. 
it's it sucks to it sucks to have to admit our failures, right? But it is what it is. Um, so in in actually late 2010, we launched Virtual Starfinder, virtualstarfinder.com, which is still going now and it's kicking ass and taking names. And what we do there is basically we're a, a virtual assistant matchmaking service for busy online entrepreneurs. So if you're stressed out and overworked, you come to us, we find you a great VA to work with directly. Once you hire them, we're out of the picture. Thank you for playing, that kind of thing, right? And that's still kicking ass, it's, it's going great. Um, but I think probably 2011, I started a, a, a new little fun thing on the side, which cost me about 50 grand called Your Web PA. So your web personal assistant, yourwebpa.com. And basically what was um, what we were doing is we were we were kind of bridging the gap between kind of Elance and Odesk and working with kind of unknown VAs that you didn't know for those one-off tasks. And I had a team, I had a beautiful office. And man, you know what happened was I drank my own bloody Kool-Aid. That's what's happened here, <laughs> right? And this is very important for everybody tuning in to understand and appreciate is that sometimes we're so close that we can't see that we're walking down the wrong side of the street. And I had stopped listening to my audience at this point. I started listening to my own monologue. Uh, oh, they need this, Chris. They're going to trust you because you've got a proven brand and, and you know, people trust you and your name and your businesses. And this is going to be great. And obviously, we were basically doing the same work as all of these freelancers were doing, but at a 25% markup because I had bills to pay and staff to pay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Hasten to say, obviously, it tanked. And uh, about five months in, I decided to pull the plug with, like I said, about 50 grand down the drain and probably a good year of my life wasted. What did you learn? What did you learn? I learned really honestly that people um, will not necessarily buy what you think they need and they will only buy what they truly want and need. Uh, and uh, I also learned that, you know, if I'd have just listened to my customers, listened to my community and my audience already that was in place that I was already listening to, um, otherwise I wouldn't have started Virtual Starfinder. Um, if I'd have listened to my audience, they would have told me that they were not willing to pay 25 to 35% more for tasks that they could get done on Elance. So I think that's the loser <laughs> full on. You know what I mean? It was a total waste of time I actually, and money. I think that's the number one thing that business owners, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, all this stuff forget when they start doing business and they start doing really well at it. They start building it up and they get a clientele and they build up the, the, the motions and everything that they forget where they came from, that they yep. forget to, like you said, listen to what is going on online about what they're saying. And then oh, yeah. they start coming up like you did with an idea saying, oh, that's a good idea. I'm just going to do it instead of doing yeah. a little trial and test to see what right. the feedback is. Because if you get great feedback, OK, they want this type of thing. So yeah, and here's a it. crazy thing. Here's the crazy thing. Look, at, and obviously, I've looked back on this. Boy, have I looked back on <laughs> Not for a while, but, you know, when we decided to kind of close up shop, obviously, I was looking back on it quite a bit. But I could have done that. I could have quite easily validated the idea. And I do this now with every business idea that I have now going forward, obviously. But I had a community, Robert. I mean, they were there. I had a mailing list at that point of probably about six or 7,000 people. I could have quite easily said, we have a limited number of these tasks that we're going to be doing for clients at these costs, click here and order one right now, and I will make sure that it gets done properly using my own virtual assistants. I could have validated the idea, and it wouldn't have worked because it didn't bloody work. Right. It wouldn't have worked. We might have had one or two orders, but we wouldn't have sold out the entire sort of you know number that we had put to one side. And it would have been obvious to me that it was a no starter, and I wouldn't have started and put 50 grand of my money up and, you know, it might have been more than that by the time we were done. I don't know. But it was it was painful nonetheless. Um, but, you know, the funny thing is all of the really, really good lessons usually cost you money. So you don't forget them. That is true. That is true. Yeah.
Very true. Very true. I can see some of the comments here. This is what I love about Blab is that the comments stay and you can scroll, right? Yeah, this With Periscope. Is this is in Periscope. <laughs> yeah. And and you know, you know I'm a big Periscoper. So, you know, th this is That's cool. How I met so you. I like this. So we've got um Hang on, who said something? Okay, so Carmen is is reiterating, don't drink the Kool-Aid, which I thought was brilliant. Somebody else said another little snarky comment here somewhere. Oh, that's right, it was Ivan. Uh, Ivan Cla wants to know, is there a certain conference schedule that you have set up already for the first half of the year? Uh, okay, yeah, so, so, I mean, if you want to stay up to date with my speaking schedule, you can go to chrisducker.com forward slash speaking and you'll see everything there as and when i add them um but uh what am i doing i'm not speaking that much next year i'm going to be focusing in on my own events and building um youpreneur.com and writing the book but uh i am speaking at social media marketing world in san diego great and i will also be hosting a very exclusive in-person mastermind for my youpreneur members uh, at that event as well. So there'll be a whole bunch of us. Anybody that's a Upano member that wants to get in on that or who, who's going to be attending social media market mode or maybe not. And um, speak of the I, devil, look who just came in when you said social media. Social media. Who came in? Oh, it's Mr. Stelzner. Michael, would yes. you like to join us? <laughs> Michael, I'm Mike, I'm pitching you. I'm pitching your event here, brother. Um, so, uh, well, yes, yeah, so I'm going to be Chris, did you time that perfectly? <laughs> I think it was so good. <laughs> so, yeah, I will be at Social Media Marketing World. It's going to be my first time to speak there. Um, I was supposed to speak uh, last year, but unfortunately I had to pull back uh, because of a, a, conf a conflict with my with my son's uh, schooling schedule. But I'm very excited. You know, it's been by far, and I'm not saying this because Mike is here, but by far it is the most highly respected and talked about social media online business sort of type of conference that is out there nowadays um it has become the you know honestly this uh, this kind of standard operating procedure of those kind of events and i'm pumped to be speaking it's going to be great to be there and then um uh am i doing that oh okay so that's april so the month before that i'm doing tropical think tank for the third time which is my own conference that I run here in the Philippines. It's very exclusive. There's only five, uh, sort of rather 50 uh, attendee uh, tickets that we sell. It's a high ticket item. It's $4,000 a pop. And um, we're already sold out for next year. And uh, I, I thoroughly look forward to doing that. But I will be doing less speaking next year to focus on uh, Youpreneur and to focus on the new book as well. Um, but yeah, social media marketing world, I'm definitely looking forward to and I'm also going to be speaking. Um, I, I can't. I can't talk about those other two events because I haven't announced uh, that I'm speaking with, at them yet. But there will be two other events later on in the year that I'll be taught, that I'll be speaking at as well. That's great, Michael. Um, Michael I'm just doing uh, a, an, interview an interview with, interview with Chris, Chris, and he and happened. He, somebody asked his schedule, and he mentioned your event, and you popped in the room. So I didn't know if you wanted to. We should get. We, we should get Mike on the camera. Mike, can you get on the camera? Lot. He asked what the topic was, and I said, it's, the topic is kind of Chris. <laughs> which, is, which, which, as we all know, is Mr. Stelzner's favorite thing in the world of to talk course. about, right? <laughs> of course. And it's oh, funny because dude. I'm doing the opposite. I'm, like, going out more now and talking because well, I, I started my own thing where I'm going to be traveling across the United States and doing stuff. So I love it. I love it. How do we get Mike in? He said he's happy he, to jump in. How do we get him he in? Has to, he just has to ask to come in. He hits the call in, and I'm going to let him in. He might be okay. just getting ready. That's all. That's and all. I want to know, how comes Robert's got like 8,000 more <laughs> hand because they are thingies so than I do? Little. I'm doing all the bloody talking here. You What's going on here? <laughs> Here, is it open now, Mike? I do not see seat open, he yeah, says. Yeah, I just opened it back up. Is it open? So much fun. Come on, let's get him in. That's so funny. I, I couldn't believe he's talking about it. And all of a sudden I went, Mike, he's on mobile. That's okay, Mike. Let's get them in. Now I'm starting to get some high fives, but so are you. <laughs> so you're still well ahead of the curve here. I, you know, I got, I, right, Ivan, we'll hang out a minute. Uh, take care of it. I love it. No, this is a great thing. I mean, you know, 
I, I came on early, like about 100 and I don't know, 16 or 17 days ago on here. And I just love it. I love the fact um, that you can talk to people. I mean, the whole thing that you just said, how don't forget, don't forget to ask questions and talk to your audience. Yep. Oh, my God. Blab is the ultimate way to do it. Come on here with an idea and see what people think of it. I tell you what, I and, and am I right in saying this? I heard this from a little birdie somewhere at a conference when I was in the U.S. last month that you can actually embed the yes. Blab screen onto your own website now. Is that true? You can embed it on your website, on your blog as a replay. You can also embed it as a live thing. That when that? You okay. go here, you it'll also go on live on your website. I love this. So this this very possibly could change my live streaming um, focus, which, as you know, has been Periscope thus far. Um, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try a few more blabs out. We're gonna we're gonna. Listen, I'm, I, I can give you a real cheap course on it. Okay. <laughs> Good. I like that. <laughs> so there I was like a couple that. of questions while we're waiting for Mike. Um, I yeah. did see Ray's podcast put yeah, something so. in. Um, What's your advice for Mike? Why isn't it letting me? Mike, join again. It wouldn't let me accept you. I don't know why. Why isn't it doing it? I'm you checking can't the actually, box. Can you not actually invite him directly? No, he's got to call in. Oh, uh, okay. And wow, I'm hitting the green box and it won't let me in. I think they got some bugs going tonight. Wow. Now, how do I give props? Is that what that is? That's props. Oh, hands in the lower right-hand corner. I've got to click, right corner, click you. Okay, so I'm clicking you right now, Robert, just to give you more. Yeah. Because, you, I mean, you're and so far I'm ahead. doing yours. Mike, try one more time because for some reason I can't. Wait, let me do this. Let me do this. Now try it again. He's going in the Chrome now. He's going in the Chrome. Oh, I can okay. See, I can right, see. The that person that asked the question, Ray, he had asked – um. Where is it? People that are on limited budgets. You know, okay. they don't have a lot of money. And they were asking, here it is. Advice for solopreneur that need to delegate but have limited resources. Okay. So, I mean, really what it comes down to is, is doing that three list of freedom, okay? Working out what you need to delegate and why you want to delegate it. And then really, if you've got very limited, you know, resources financially or timeline wise or whatever it may be, is to really prioritize what tasks you think you need to be handing off and delegating before anything else. Now, if that means you're only delegating one thing a week or two things a month, then that's still two things you're getting off your plate each month that someone else is working on for you. Um, and I think that's incredibly important to understand and appreciate the fact that, you know, two things off your plate is two things off your plate. And that's that means you've got more thing, more time that you can spend on, you know, developing projects or creating content to serve your audience better or liaising with them better, taking the conversation off of your blog on the social more more frequently because you've got that more time freed up on your schedule, that kind of thing. For me, it's just about getting started. Take that one thing that you either hate doing or you can't do or you're struggling doing <laughs> and just get rid of that to begin with. And then slowly but surely, because of the time that it brings you, and that's what we're doing, we're buying time. Here ultimately is what we're doing by delegating something you've got two options with that time you can either sit on your butt and watch reruns on tv or you can get active and start doing something that's going to ultimately create more opportunities for you and bring oh hang on michael stelsner is calling in i can see if the little green thing Do I say hit, yes? green, hit the green box okay it's not working no it's not yeah i Nothing don't know what's happening. going on it's not happening all right, I'm actually going to refresh. I made you a co-host, so you have control. Ooh. I'll be back in one second. Got control. So I hope that answers your your question there in regards to um, how you can get started if those resources are limited. I sincerely hope that. But, but if you have any other questions or if anybody in, in here actually has any questions at all, just uh, drop me a quick tweet on Twitter, at Chris Ducker, and I'll be more than happy to say what's up. Wow. Mike Stelzner. Mike I'm not, Stelzner. I'm not look, liking the way I'm looking on camera today. 
<laughs> well, you you're always a handsome devil. Always What's a handsome man. Doctor, how are the Philippines treating you, man? It's great. It's a beautiful sunny day. I mean, literally, I can't see a single cloud. Actually, it's a beautiful day here today. And I was just uh, before I hopped on here, I was out on my balcony having a cup of coffee with my wife and my little one. And we were talking about buying me a Spider-Man outfit. I don't know how we got onto that subject, but apparently my son now wants me to dress like Spider-Man when I'm at home. So we'll see what we can do there. <laughs> You're awesome. a dad. You're a dad. You get these things, right? <laughs> Is Robert, can you, can, do you see Robert? Is he trying to get back in the seat? <laughs> He's like, help, can't open the third seat. He's locked out. He's locked out of his own lab. Do me a favor, make me a co-host just because I've done this a bazillion times and let me see. How do I how do I do you this? Click, you click on my face and then you'll see a little H with a plus sign. I'm not I'm not seeing anything. Well, wait a minute, it's not an H. What is it? Uh, if you click on my profile, you should see something that looks like a circle in the upper left hand corner. Oh, okay. And then I click that. Make this person a co-host. There you go. Okay, now I've been made a co-host. So okay, Robert, try to lock, try to come back in again, and I'll see if we can get you in. Well, what, Sandra, what, what, Sandra is saying that this is crazy. It is. <laughs> That's one well, word, Sandra. Here's the, yeah. here's the good news, Robert. The moment you left is the moment I got in. Yeah. And the, <laughs> <laughs> the moment you disappeared, I took your spot. I mean, oh, I God. tried to get out of my mobile phone, and I couldn't get out of that. Then I tried um, uh, Firefox. I couldn't get out of that. Finally got in on Chrome. I love but anyways, it. no, I was just the, like. The, the third seat won't open for the guy. This is great. Second. That was weird. It just went locked, and I unlocked it. Well, how about anybody try to call in? Let's just see what happens. Yeah. Can we get someone else? Someone else. Ivan, why don't you come in? Oh, I didn't say well, here's, a, here's a ton of people coming in, Robert. I don't know if you want them. You in know or what? Not. I'm I'm clicking the little green button to accept them, and it ain't working. Is that exactly what happened with me? Yes, exactly the same thing. Shall I try refreshing? Then sure. I might dis I might disappear forever at that point, which would be disastrous for everybody here. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it, I think right now maybe um, uh, it's only allowing two people on at a time. Well, well, now that I'm here, what in the world are we talking about today? <laughs> <laughs> We were talking. Go ahead. Uh, we were we were talking about. Um, we were just talking about sort of just building a business based around your brand, mm -hmm. basically. And this is what you know. This is what Youpreneur is all about. This is what we're focused on. So, you know, the the demographic is you know coaches, authors, speakers, um, you know, experts, that kind of you know crowd. People who have got a genuine expertise and they want to be building a business based around that expertise and what they bring to the table and the people that they serve basically. And uh, that was what we were getting stuck into. We talked a little bit about my burnout and how I freed myself up with virtual staff and things like that. And then you turned up just as the question was, where are you speaking next year? Chris came up and you were the first guy that I, that I talked about and boom, there you were. Your ears were obviously burning Michael over there in San Diego. That's too funny. Well, Robert, I'm happy to take over the interview. Type in the questions. <laughs> um, I mean, I've been pretty impressed, to be honest with you, Chris, what you've been doing with this youpreneur thing. Um, Thank you, man. It means you know, a lot you, coming from you. Yeah, you've got, you know, uh, can you share with us what your big vision is with this if you haven't already done so? You know, it's funny because at first in my in my sort of warped mind, <laughs> at first I was like, you know what, I'd like to have a thousand members it's a membership it's recurring either monthly or annually and in my mind at first i was just like you know what i'd love to have like a thousand people in here it'd be a good business for me um i'd have a lot of fun doing it and i would be creating the right or, or rather attracting the right kind of people because i always say that your vibe will attract your tribe and it's very very true um the people that are youpreneurs that are inside the community are just like me they have a very similar mentality to business and you know hustling when you need to but switching off when you when you want to and things like that and so i think that, you know but as time has gone by over the last few months since we launched things have changed a little bit and i think there is a, a slightly bigger 
picture to it now. Um, we've teamed up with Pencils of Promise, which is an amazing charity, which I know that you're familiar with, and a lot of people probably are. Um, but what they do is they basically build schools for underprivileged children, you know, in very poor areas around the world, like Africa and uh, uh uh, over here in Southeast Asia. And, um, you know, several of the people that I know, love and trust, like, you know, Lewis Howes and Pat Flynn and these guys, they've all got behind that charity. And I thought, you know what? I want to do something as well. So we've teamed up with Pencils of Promise and now 10% of every membership each month um, will go towards that charity. And I'm hoping to build our first school very, very soon. Um, and so there is a bigger picture now. It's going to become, the you know, the topic of the next book which is already in very, very early stages of being planned sort of in terms of, you know, content and the, you know, the subjects that we want to sort of try and uh, focus in on and things like that. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of the, the really big plan, you know, I, I see a large event. We're going to be holding our first ever Youpreneur Summit in London, England uh, next October. And, um, you know, I'll be happy if I end up getting a couple of hundred people there for the first year. And he's back! Yes, I can, I can take my blab back. <laughs> yes, love it. It's all I think I, did, I think I did a pretty good impromptu job. I had a whole lineup of questions. Right no, there. it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I thought you pulled yeah. a Joe Tom on me there for a second. Look. You know. <laughs> hey man, I'm Listen. I'm probably the one that originally. I'm the original blabjacker. <laughs> <laughs> What I loved about this was, Rob, and I'm telling you, if there was one person that you would want to take over this show for you, it would have been Mr. Stelzner. This is royalty. This is royalty right here. It is what it is. Exactly. <laughs> but he was actually saying very nice things about my my new venture. So thanks, Mike. I, I, I have a crazy question, if you're willing to let me ask it, Robert. Do no. you think it's harder to be an entrepreneur or easier now, Chris, than it was maybe five or ten years ago? I don't think it's easier to be an entrepreneur than what it was five or 10 years ago. And I've been an entrepreneur for 13 years now. That's why I have no damn hair left. Um, but I, I think, I don't think it's easier to be an entrepreneur. I think it's easier to get started as an entrepreneur. I think it's easier to validate your entrepreneurial ideas. I think it's easier to test uh, and to um, converse with prospective customers. Uh, you know, 10 years ago, we didn't have the ability to, to throw up landing pages to see what kind of uh, numbers we would get on our opt-ins to see if an idea was worthwhile pursuing and things like that. So I don't think it's easy to be an entrepreneur. The struggle is still very much real, uh, but I think it's easier to to get started and to try things out. I'm curious to know what you think about that. I think it's, I think it's the hardest the time. Hardest. Well, there's a bit of an echo, but I think your volume might be a little bit too high on your end. Um, I think I think it's an exceptionally hard time to be an entrepreneur. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm always feeling very blessed that I was able to start my business when I did. Um, I think that the days of old, where you could create content on a blog, on a on a blog, or on a podcast, and very rapidly grow an audience, are gone. And I'm yep. not going to say you shouldn't still podcast and you shouldn't still blog, but it's exceptionally hard now. And on social media, there used to be a day where you could have an audience on Facebook and you could actually communicate with those people. So now there's a need really to um, to, to, to kind of just build little micro audiences and hope you can grow a bit of business out of that. It's exceptionally complex. I mean, like, at Social Media Examiner, we're almost reinventing every 30 days because yeah. things are changing that fast. So um, I'm not going to discourage anyone from being an entrepreneur, but when you see these billion dollar companies like Snapchat and Facebook, there's no way that we can compete with these. It's almost going back to the good old boy days. It's also it's almost coming back to if you don't have venture capital or you don't have contacts or you don't have people of influence, it's extremely hard to stand out. So. I think, um, it's and I think in in your world, I would hate to be in your business. In the social media business, I'd hate to be in that business because it does change so darn frequently, and not just a little change or a tweak here and there. Like it, it, it goes night and day, very, very regularly. I'd hate to have your business. Now, I'd anybody, love to have the money anybody, connected to it. But anybody you know. who has an audience that's more than maybe two years old is probably somewhat immune to this. But for those of you that are just getting started right now. Um, like you said, it's very easy to get started. It's very hard to, to sustain. And yeah. I think that's the challenge. 
See, I Robert, think this I, is your take over. <laughs> I think it's easy to start a business and be a business owner, but the word entrepreneur is completely different. Um, and it goes back to what Chris is getting involved in now that I feel is that they're not using their time wisely. Mm -hmm. They're going into what Chris did in 2010, doing those 14, 15 hour days where they're doing the paperwork, which they don't want to do. They're, they're, they're struggling on all the stuff that they don't excel in and, and they could be using their hours more wisely. Now, if they can understand that, like Chris is doing, I think you can see entrepreneurs being easier but the problem is the number one thing I find with, with companies I work with, they hate giving up control. They hate giving up that little, I want to do the billing. I want to do this. I want to see everything before it gets out. I got to, they micromanage every little detail of their business and they're not willing to give up. Like Chris is saying, to give this stuff to a VA, to do something else, because that's what an entrepreneur is knowing when you can do your thing so well and not doing the things either you don't know well or you really don't want to do to give them to somebody else to do. Would you it's a very, very good point. Couldn't agree more. I think if more people learn that, entrepreneurship is not as hard. I will tell you that one thing that most people don't understand is the content side of this. Those people that are successful are people like Chris and Robert who are consistently creating either a blab or a podcast and they are giving away such value for free to their audience that they're building a tribe even if it's really small uh, that tribe can make them very successful and if you look at anyone in any industry who's looked up to as a thought leader they are voracious about producing content and that is the one thing that you can do that most people do not do um, there's hardly anybody here on Blab that's actually doing Blabs. They're mostly consuming other people's Blabs. If you want to succeed, the key to that is to create great content. I'm curious what you think about that, Chris. I 100% uh, agree with you. Um, I have noticed direct, direct correlations between my business or, or rather more email opt-ins, more converting customers to my services, my products, my programs, to less of all those numbers when I am super active creating fresh new content and publishing it and getting it out there and promoting it and taking time off. Because I do, I regularly take time off throughout the course of the year. Maybe I won't blog for an entire month, but what happens that month? My blog traffic will drop. It's just natural. It is what it is. The only thing that I'm only ever really consistent with when it comes to my, um, my content creation is my podcast. You know, every single week there's going to be a new episode of Youpreneur FM every single week. And so, you know, I sometimes go about like we 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 just um, we just brought on a infographic designer to design a whole bunch of infographics for us, and we've got six of them now that will be will release one every single month for the next six months. That's the way to do it. When you talk about creating content that's going to serve people on a consistent basis. If at all, if you can batch that content together and kind of put it into a publishing schedule, that's where I've been able to knock out incredible amounts of content in a very long, consistent period of time because I batch like mad. I will go into hermit mode for two weeks where I won't have a single call. I won't do a single meeting. I won't go to my facilities HQ or anything like that. And what I'll do by the end of that two weeks, I'll have... 10 podcasts in the, in, in the can. I'll have five new blog posts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I know that now I'm good for the next three months. And that's what I do with my content. I batch like a madman. I'm like a man possessed with batching. Uh, and then I can take some time off for a little bit and then come back and batch again. And uh, right now I'm actually creating content, audio content for the podcast right now that will go live in February. So that shows you how far in advance I am some of the times. Hey, Tracy, how you doing? Hi, Robert. I just finished my blab. Okay. You got a, I don't know if you have any questions for Chris or, or now we got an extra. We got Michael in here. I see <laughs> that. What a good thing. Now, where is Chris and Michael coming from? Where so I'm coming from, I'm, I'm coming from the Philippines. I'm originally from London. The accent might give that away a little bit. But I'm, uh, I actually live over in the Southeast Asia here in the Philippines. I've been here 15 years. I'm in Southern wow. California. 
Wow. I and, and New York and in Colorado. So I'm like kind of in the, on the way to all you guys. <laughs> um, I, I think we just had somebody we had like two or three countries in South America on my lab. So I think it's just fascinating that we can all attract this. And um, Robert, you are the guy. We actually talked about you on our lab. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> We weren't making fun of you, though. We were telling everyone how great you were. So you. it's all good. No, we're doing now. I'm letting people in if they got questions for Chris or Michael. Michael runs um, Social Media a, Examiner, a, a, a small little company. Um, <laughs> Come on. It, it has to be the most visited website in the world. How many visitors? Come on. I had to say that to him. He smiled. Talk about content. It's insane the amount of content you create with your team. I, I want to know. What's the number? How many unique visitors, not page views, how many unique visitors on a monthly basis are you getting at socialmediaexaminer.com now? It's about 1.1 to 1.3 million. <laughs> it's insane. That's mad. Wow. I love it. And okay. page views? Page views is, is over 2 million. Incredible. But you know what? I mean, like, um, this is interesting because Ray's podcast, I don't know if you saw this, Robert, he was asking whether there's an overload of repetitive content that's getting in the way of original content creators. And mm -hmm. I mean, like, we also produce a daily podcast, a weekly podcast, a weekly blab show. We have a brand new YouTube channel we're launching in a couple of weeks. We're producing content like crazy. So the question I would love to hear from you all is, is there too much content or is it just mostly a lot of garbage? And, and is the good stuff going to rise to the top? I'm going to let Chris go first. Let ladies first. Tracy, oh, Tracy, go ahead. All right. Thank you. See, there's someone that's gallant here, Robert. Um, so My mom would kill me if I didn't do that. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. And she's watching. I'm just saying. Um, yeah. So. As an SEO and, and a website company owner for years, we've been telling people to, to blog for over and over and over. And I think what's happening is it does get very crowded now. You guys, Michael, create the content that everybody shares, everybody tweets, mm. everybody. It's repetitive in that way. Um, and I think that you guys create better content. I think Mashable and SEO mods, there's people that just create great content that we're all thirsty for. It's when people start to put things up there that are just to get the ratings, just to get the rankings. If you search, what's the best time to go to Disney? There's 300 million answers. How does Disney even compete in that? So the idea is that I think there, it's a, it's a very difficult job for Google to figure out what is the most relevant thing because we can all be saying how to blab. We can all be writing that article because that's what people are searching for. So I think that we have to find another way. And I think SEO is going to be the trick. It's it's a different game than it used to be, but I think that we have to create unique things and create unique ways for people to find us. Chris? I, I have an interesting thought on what Tracy just said. I think one thing we all need to keep in mind is that it's a big world out there. And mm -hmm. I've I heard a couple months ago people saying, Can you stop talking about how to get how to use Blab? And I said, no, I think I think you should come on here every day for months talking about how to use Blab because every day for the next few years, there's going to be new people wondering how to use Blab. And mm -hmm. keep this in mind because it's such a huge world, it doesn't mean they all read the first result on Google. In reality, mm -hmm. most people don't even go to Google anymore to find out information. Very they true. tap their social network. So yeah. it, it's actually a big enough world that all you need is your little tiny piece of it. So I think repetitiveness in one mind's eye, it's a rerun, and in, in another way, it's a new episode. So I'm curious what you think about that. I, I think what um, I think we need to look at it, and I, I, I tend to look at my content creation as an extension of my own brand, my own personal brand as well. And so my focus really here. And, and this, I think, kind of puts the idea of the fact that there's too much repetitive content out there. Um, I know, for example, that I'm not the only one that will talk about the importance of building a personal brand or the importance of building a team to help you build and run and support your business. 
there are other people talking about that. Some of them might actually talk, be talking about it in a much more professional manner than me. Some of it might be talking, they might be dropping more value bombs than I do. And I like to drop the old value bomb or two, I can tell you that right now. But what I am saying is, and this is what I focus on, every piece of content that I create, written, video, audio, graphic, social, whatever it is, there is always a slice of Chris in there. I always put my own little spin on it in some capacity. And I know that that vibe will attract my right kind of tribe, plain and simple. And so what I try and do with everything that I create and publish and, and market is I try to become somebody's favorite. If I can do that, if I can become their favorite podcaster or their favorite blogger or their favorite video guy or just their favorite guy to follow on Twitter for little one-liners or for some quick questions here and there. If I can become somebody's favorite, then I'm winning in that race, I believe anyway. And that's what I do. I try and become somebody's favorite. And I use my brand and my own personality because there's only one Chris Ducker, thank God. Uh, and I, oh, I oh, use sure. I use that personality and that kind of cocky kind of Londoner kind of business kind of mindset to to my advantage, I believe, because there's only one me. And if I focus on building the business around me and my personality and what I stand for, there's no real competition out there. And that's the way I look at it anyway. I think there's also enough to go around. You know, we all can can write a story on Blab. We can all write a story on Facebook, but it's our tribe. It, it's my Denver clients. It's the people that I work with on the East Coast and the West Coast. There's still a billion people that, you know, don't ever, have never heard of me. But it, it's just I have to touch the people that I touch. And, and it doesn't matter that there's duplicate content. The people that are following me are going to listen to what I'm saying. And that's really what you were saying, Michael, is is – there's plenty of people to go around and we all have our own tribe, right? Yeah. And there's always room to grow too. I mean, like, you know, I, I'm always shocked at how many people are interested every year and how the numbers go up, you know, on our site, like we'll see anywhere from 20 to 40% increase in traffic from one month over the prior month and the prior year, every year for the last six years. So you would think at a certain point, how many millions of people would be interested in this, but sure enough, there's still a lot of marketers that have never heard of Social Media Examiner, and there's plenty of mark there's plenty of entrepreneurs that don't know Chris Ducker, or or entrepreneurs or whoever you're trying to reach. So I, I think that that's the cool part is if you have a voice that's unique, and a personality that's unique, and you can say it in a way that that resonates with that right kind of audience. I mean, gosh, when I started Social Media Examiner, there was a there was thousands of bloggers talking about social media. I was late to the game, and you know. Um, and Chris Ducker is not the first guy to talk about entrepreneurship <laughs> and he won't be the last, but I know he'll be successful because he's darn tenacious. And he's got a good accent. You're being nice. That's a, that's a good word. I like that. <laughs> I don't know if you saw my message, Tracy. I got a bunch of people that want to pop in and ask Chris a question if it's possible. I'll, I'll pop, you know what? I'll pop out you guys. Um, I don't want to dominate your show, but I'm no, glad no, I no, popped in okay. when I did. It's okay. Huh? We, it was so weird. Somebody asked him literally, so what's on your schedule next year for speaking? And he, he goes, well, I'll be working at the social media. Exam and you come in the room as he says the words. <laughs> it was just like, did you guys time this? Kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 also, I also saw you got Brian going to be there today, too. He put out something that Brian's going to be speaking down there. Which Brian are you talking about? So. Solis? Oh, Fanzo. Oh, Fanzo's there. Yeah, Fanzo yeah. and Solis. I, social fan. I wish I could get out there this year. I can't get out because I'm going to be actually on the other side of the country uh, for three days prior to yours. So, bummer. Yeah, otherwise. All I'd right. Well, there. I'll let you guys go. Thank you for letting me jump on here, Chris. Right. Nice to see you, bro. Uh, we'll talk you to too, you all man. soon. Bye bye. Yeah, you got it. Take care, Mike. Anthony. Robert, how are you? Good, good. Grace. We are so sexy with our microphones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, I, Chris, we, just we before, up. I, think oh, yours is bigger, I think yours is bigger than mine, Chris. I don't know. <laughs> it's a pop filter party. All right. So, Chris, before he, Anthony asks his question, how much time do you have? Because I know you're, you're on a limited. It's, it's, 
Yeah, I got like another, maybe another 10 minutes or so. So let's okay. go rapid fire. I, I think. just yeah. wanted to make sure that's why. Okay. I'll be quick. I'll be quick. So Chris, I've had, I, I, I don't know you, but now I do because I've actually, while you were talking and answering questions, I had a chance to pop into your scopes, by the way, very good. Very good. You, you I, I think the one thing I would say is that you're just, just some quick feedback is you're, you're very consistent. You're very engaging. You have a complete complete sales and marketing spin, which I think is why people listen to you. And the reason why I was disagreeing with some of the comments that Michael said, with all disrespect, yeah, but all due respect, not disrespect, is that, you know, mm -hmm. it, everyone's, everyone's going to start content somewhere. I mean, there are millions and millions of blogs created every day, but listen, it's all about the six human needs. Don't look, I don't want to get too philosophical or psychological here, but the six human needs, you know, which is love, commitment, growth, you know, and if you're the guy to deliver that, then they're going to resonate with you. So your ability to cut through the noise is really the context you put around the content. And I need, I would love to get your feedback on that. No, you know, it just goes back to exactly what I was saying a minute ago in regards to being, you know, becoming somebody's favorite, right? right. You know, the fact is that, you know, I believe that as content creators, regardless of what niche or industry you're in, you have a, you know, you, you, you have a, it's it's a desire or you should have a desire to serve people in the right way so when somebody asks you a question on twitter reply to it you're not a big shot reply yeah. to the damn tweet right. my mantra is no tweet left behind and i mean that genuinely I like that. I like that. um yes i auto tweet posts to my old sure. content and stuff like that when my va slams into a, a scheduler for me right. but when you get a reply at, at chris ducker it's from me it's never from anybody else right so you know, the, what I what I really try and do is I try and serve my audience and my community. And it really is now it's a community in my mind. It's no longer an audience per se, because I get to meet so many people that listen to my show and read my blog and watch my scopes and things like that. Rather than before, I wouldn't get to meet people so much. And the moment I meet somebody in person, they're a friend. They might not be a super close friend, right, but, it changes but they're the still game. a friend. It changes the game. Right. So it does completely. Yeah. So my second, and so just, it really, it really does come down to just becoming or wanting truly to serve somebody, to give them the right answers to those questions and provide the right solutions to their problems. And then ultimately, hopefully become somebody's favorite. That's, that's really what it is for me. So, so, so what you said, so if I can hear, if I can kind of replay my brain, what you said, it's all about engagement, 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 engagement. So whether you have yeah. 5,000 followers, five followers or 50,000 followers like you, it's all about engaging with your audience, which I, I, I totally get. So my second question is I'm going to pop out of the seat. Robert, thank you for letting me pop and I appreciate it. Not a problem. And, and Chris, before I forget, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you and I wish you all the best success and, and, and Pleasure's all mine. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. So how has Blab and Periscope changed the dynamics of your business? So let's let's go back prior 100 days, okay? You know, so who's this guy, Chris? Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, he's a Brit guy who lives in the Philippines. Who the hell is this guy? And then all of a sudden, oh, my God, the, we use an American term, so pardon me, the hockey stick. Blab and Periscope, just right. what you just blast off. Please help me, and for the 36 people in this room, help me understand how Blab has directly – affected your business growth over time uh, since well, blab but blab blab itself has not affected it all that much i believe at this point because i've not been super active on blab okay. but you i have be been very active. he will be soon <laughs> now. I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying it there's no doubt about we got it you yeah. now. Um, i mean the Peris periscope for me is that jedi mind trick exactly. right per periscope for me has has been the big kind of um catalyst for me to really engage on, on live streaming with my community. But what I found at first when I started using it, and you're right, I mean, you pointed out I'm blessed to have a decent sized community already. But when I started using Periscope, I thought, well, I'm going to be serving the same people and I'm going to be conversing with them. And it's just another great way for me to connect with my community. This is great. But I found out literally immediately that there was a whole different scope of people on Periscope or just, let's say, live streaming period. And my community, because of my regular scoping, has ballooned. I mean, right. it, it's okay. I wish it was around five years ago. It'd be a whole different ball game. Right. I'd be sitting with half a million followers on Twitter, not 50 something thousand. Right. right? So right. I think that it's enabled me to open doors in a lot of different ways that I wouldn't have had without. Uh, I can directly associate a good hundred or so Youpreneur yeah. members, nice. at least a good hundred or so nice. inside my mastermind community. Right. Yeah, Ivan, this is for you, brother. <laughs> um, he's a Youpreneur member, and um, <laughs> I am. I'm, 
I can directly associate at least $20,000 worth of business for ticket sales to my annual event, Tropical Think Tank, here in the Philippines next March. Bravo, so bravo. It, it, it really, truly can serve you as a business owner. I think what really matters, and Mike was talking about this a, a little while ago, the consistency is key. That's the it. value that yeah. you bring. You've yeah. got to drop those value bombs. Otherwise, people will just tune out. It's that simple. So so two things. No, and Anthony, Chris did a good piece in a podcast a few weeks ago. I think it was especially about what you're talking about right now, right, Chris? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna troll through all of your scopes just so you know. <laughs> so let you know the time I'll be trolling through them. But I uh, so so the message I'm hearing is and 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 Robert and I talk about it all the time. You know Robert, you know Robert's fantastic blab. By the way, it's great to have this uh, blab here. Is the consistency, consistency, consistency. And I think that's what most people lack. Entrepreneur isn't something you become. It's in your DNA. You just do right, or you preneur. You know, it's in your DNA. It's just part of what you do. And part of what you do is being consistent, consistently putting yeah. out valuable content in the right context to people who understand who you are, why you are, and what you do. That's what I heard from you. That's what I heard from you. That's, so. that's exactly what I said. Okay. So good job. You listened well. <laughs> Chris, it's very nice to meet you. Ivan, always good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Robert Hopper, you've learned well. I learned well. <laughs> Young Jedi. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Ivan, how All are right, you? Let's bring man? in some energy, baby. You're, Ivan, was it? Ivan I saw you, tracks your tribe, baby. I saw you, shirt. <laughs> That's right. I love it. Now, where, where are these shirts exactly? Where are these shirts? Well, are you said, buying they, them? or You, you can buy them. them. They sent one to me a, a couple of months ago. Cool. I picked mine up at uh, was it Periscope Community Summit in New York when uh, Brittany Metz, who's the community manager at Blab, was there just uh, infiltrating Periscope Summit and handing out her T-shirts. Nice. Quick question. I know there's a long line here. Yep. So Chris, definitely great to see you in Philly. My question is, so when we were talking in Philly, you were like, ah, blab, I don't like the name. So who got you? No, and and I, I hesitated to bring you on to blab after you were so vehemently opposed to it. But I think it was Robert C. Stern that pulled you into the mix. He what did. are your thoughts? I got he wait, did. I uh, got him on here through a Facebook post. <laughs> yeah, Rob, Rob, Rob actually did he he did what every good online social, you know, focused entrepreneurs do. He social acted, media maven. He acted fast based upon something he'd seen me say. And I was I was moaning about being stood up for for a podcast interview, oh, like somebody started, reached yeah. out to me, they want me to be on their show, and then they don't freaking turn up. Hello, are you serious? So you know, I was kind of pissed off about it, and I vented a little bit about it. And um, he jumped on. He was like, oh, "Hey, okay. I don't know whether you're up for this, but you know." And I've seen, I've seen, I've seen a few of your shows and your stuff that you've right. done, Robert. Anyway, so it was, it was kind of a no-brainer to come on and try it. Plus, honestly speaking, and I'm not just saying this because you are on here, young man, but Ivan <laughs> did get me thinking, or, or at least did a great job in, in make me think about blab more. Mm -hmm. Um, and I haven't been periscoping that much over the last four or six weeks. Cause I had such a hectic travel schedule. It was tough to really be consistent, but I popped on as, and when I could, um, but now that I'm back home and sort of back to normality and I'm over my jet lag and all the rest of it. I will start to, to, uh, you know, become a little bit more, um, active again, but you know what I love about blab. And when I heard this and you just confirmed it, uh, Rob, in regards to being able to embed the Blab mm -hmm. window on your own website, that right there is game changer. That's like, come, you know, that's like ChrisDucker.com yeah. forward slash live. Yeah, tell them about the audio Friday and video night. file blah, blah, about blah, blah, blah. one minute after the recording stops, too, Robert. Yeah, well, you automatically this? get when this ends, I'm going to get an email, and actually, you're going to get an email because you're a host. Yes. Okay. Because I made you a co-host. You're going to get an email within five to ten minutes that this is over, with the download button to download an MP4, an MP3, and an embed code. What? And, and with one click, you can just upload it to YouTube. And if you're really cool, I'll play a guitar solo right before I leave, so you, you can have some really good content. <laughs> I can see you sitting there, brother. I want to see what you're going to be playing. I want uh, to see that. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell so you welcome, that. welcome to Blab, Chris. Chris. I'm going to bounce out. We yeah. should, we should Thank Skype, you, Skype Respect, in the next brother. couple of days, and I'll, I'll go over everything with you. It's unbelievable. Nice. Okay, then, good stuff. Get the harmonica. <laughs> What's up, Matt? I haven't hey. seen you in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Robert. How's it going, dude? Good. I haven't seen you in a, 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 about a week or so. 
I've been uh, working on my podcast and everything in uh, Kingdom of Rock for helping out music entrepreneurs. And actually, I, I saw Chris on here and I saw you guys were all talking and, you know, building a lifestyle business out of your brand. And, you know, that's what I'm really trying to do for musicians. And I, I'm, a, I'm a retired military guy, as you know, and um, I'm trying to uh, become a professional musician. You know, I've got my million people on social media. I got my branding, endorsements, all that stuff. But I realized that I didn't have the business side of it figured out. And the cool thing about Chris here is I've been listening to his podcast to like enhance my business skills and come up with ideas for other musicians and stuff, you know. And uh, Chris, first of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for, uh, you know, putting that information out there for people. And uh, it's really you're really mm-hmm. inspiration. You're one of my entrepreneurial heroes. Although I haven't made a dime from it yet, but I'm I'm working on that business. I'm I'm trying to build a membership site for musicians where you know I'm going to bring in other uh, people outside of the music industry and try to help musicians figure out how to um, you know take their music brand and combine that with other things, you know, like being a guest speaker or you know um, going out and and you know how to get your fans mobilized and everything. But one thing that you teach a lot that I really wanted to ask you about, and I've, I've actually put in an interview request, but you're too busy for right now. I talked to your wife and everything. It's cool. But she said maybe later, you know. She's, she's the boss, man. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. It's cool. Boss. It's cool. <laughs> but she said, no, Chris, for you. It's good. But, um, but yeah, so uh, the uh, uh, thing that I was really thinking might be cool is if I could figure out a, a good system to help musicians figure out what to outsource and how to outsource, you know, menial tasks that they don't want to do in their business, like social media or um, web design or, um, you know, rendering files or designing graphics or whatever. And, you know, you, you're really big on outsourcing, you know. And so I, I think there's been a few people that have talked about the idea of, you know, having outsourcing specifically for musicians, you know, and, and helping them, you know, develop, you know, channels where they could just hire, you know, somebody to be a, a virtual assistant or whatever and take care of their stuff. What, what are your thoughts on that? What, what do you think about, um, you know, specialized my outsource, uh, outsourcing? My, 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 my thoughts are actually the same for musicians as they would be for accountants or for um, any other type of profession, quite frankly. It's fundamentally the same amount of systems or the same type of systems put in place for exactly the same reasons. So whether that's to offload a certain number of tasks or whether it's to free up more time or become more process driven as a business owner or whatever the case may be. The only thing that will change is obviously the types of tasks that you're, 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 you know, delegating. So with a musician, you might want to, I don't know, you might want to have, uh, you know, somebody listen to a song and then actually have it written in music, you know, like on music sheets, something along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Whereas, you know, for, for an, for a podcaster, I talk and then I give my audio file to my VA who then will transcribe it word wise. You might have it with, you know, treble clefts and, you know, you know, C's and D's and everything else that you sexy musicians do. So, I mean, you know, because I, I used to be a lead singer in a band back in the day. And so I, I'm the, I'm the worst frustrated musician you'll ever see in your life. I know like, you know, four bars and, and like, I can, I can do, 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 I can do hoochie coochie man on, a, on an acoustic <laughs> and I can play the harmonica really badly. But other than that, I worship every person that's got a genuine musical talent. I truly do. But I think that honestly, brother, just, you've just got to do your thing. And, and, and by the way, although, although it fundamentally remains the same throughout any kind of uh, profession, what will change, and this is what I've been talking about here mostly, is you've got to put you into it, Matt. That's what you need to do, man. See, I see you right there. You've got the keys behind you. Is that a lava lamp right behind you right there? <laughs> yeah. You've got the guitars with the lighting on the wall. You're sitting there with a sick guitar. Get the harp. That is, I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, like, this is you. This is your brand. This is what you're all about. Allow yourself to continue to be yourself when you're building your brand, when you're building your businesses, when you're creating these processes to serve your tribe, your musician based tribe, and they will love you for it. And they will come back over and over and over again. And even though there's a guy 
literally with a best-selling book on the subject of building virtual teams. If you were to create a course for musicians on the subject of building a virtual team to help them grow their business, I guarantee you all day long they're going to buy from you and not me because they relate with you. You're their favorite, well, and that's what it comes down and, to. And it may be entirely possible that I'm already working on that at this time, potentially. Uh, just saying. Just saying. Good. Well, <laughs> hashtag, I hope so, because yeah. your industry and your peer group needs it. Yes. They, they, every every peer group needs it. It's hard every to make a group. living, especially in music nowadays, when our product is basically free. So yeah. you got to come up with something else. You sure do, brother. You yeah. sure do. Well, cool, right. man. Well, thank you so much. That was some great uh, inspiration. I appreciate it, Chris. Thanks for jumping thank you on, for Matt. tuning into my yeah. stuff. I appreciate it. Yeah, Robert's the man. You should hang out with him. <laughs> all right i will cool. do all right cool we'll see you guys sandra you're gonna be all, you. all right hey am i did you just go away no you couldn't have you've got to Robert be kidding went. hey chris mike's gone so it's me and you Hi there chris it's just me and you so yeah i was gonna say i want a piece of chris but that would kind of sound weird i don't know my <laughs> husband wouldn't like that i like i love the slice of chris and i love be someone's favorite i'm just totally inspired by this robert and um Good. I think we created a new hashtag tonight, right? Right? Ducker Blab. Is that it? Like it's Ducker Scope, Ducker Blab now? Ducker Blab or the Blabbing Ducker? The Blabbing Duck? I don't know. Or the, the Blabbing Duck. Yeah, the Blabbing the Duck. Blabbing I don't know. Blabbing duck. I love Welcome everything. To the Blabbing Duck, everybody. Yeah, I, I love everything he was saying. Um, I'm totally inspired. I was commenting in in the side. First, I called it crazy when Robert went away, which I was just like, oh my God, what's I'm happening here? Issues. I don't know what it is. Yeah. But... So I have, it's funny because this inspired me so much. Tomorrow, my blab is on repurposing content. And I was just like, holy crap, they're dropping like all these things I can use tomorrow. Although I have some stuff prepared. But I have one question for you, Chris. I would love to get your take on bringing back the old and making it new. And I like to compare it kind of to, two things I wrote down um, almost like wearing like an old outfit and putting like an accessory on and then having people compliment you and say like, wow, that is so nice. And it's like just a plain black shirt that's like 30 years old, but you put this scarf on and everyone talked about it. So what do you, what do you, what's your take on bringing back the old and have you done it in the past and what works and what doesn't work, I guess. Not not only have I done it in the past, but I continue to do it almost every month. Wow! Um, quite frankly, so I've been I've been very actively creating online content for over five years, and it's going to be six years in January wow. coming up. Awesome! Um, so I have I have over five hundred blog posts at chrisducker dot com. Yeah, I have um, created over a hundred. 30 by the end of the year it'd be 140 blog uh podcasts at upreneur fm it's my third podcast that i've had i've probably been on close to well over 150 other people people shows as guests as well uh, yeah. when they actually turn up um and uh i've uh, well, and, and obviously i've mind. done <laughs> i've i've spent hours and hours and hours and hours on periscope as live streaming as well so yeah. i can tell you something right now I've probably I, probably actually every week I'm repurposing some type of content. Um, so for example, I might take a podcast episode from six months ago that was um, received very well, that was highly tweeted or, or shared on, on Facebook. And I'll look at that and I'll say, well, what part of that show can I use in a 15 minute live scope session? Cool. Uh, what three tips can I utilize from this blog post that I wrote yeah. a year and a half ago. Wow. Um, and likewise, and likewise, I have used content. And one of the reasons why I love Periscope so much, and maybe just live streaming in general as we're on Blab here, let's not turn it into a Periscope love fest. But I mean, one of the reasons why I love live streaming so much is because it enables you to validate your ideas in real time with your tribe before you spend a lot of time, energy and effort, and maybe even money developing it further. Now, for example, a perfect example is Youpreneur, okay? When we launched Youpreneur.com on September 1, I had been validating my headlines and in some cases, pure paragraphs of text from wow. my landing page 
Well, on, Periscope on Periscope for six weeks prior to going live. It's and there were several things that were supposed to be on that landing through. page that didn't make it. It yeah. didn't make it cut them because it didn't float very well on Periscope. And there were things that I added on Periscope that then worked brilliantly that we ended up putting on the landing page. So mm -hmm. it's it's all about repurposing. One, It's one big repurposing um you know, uh, uh, I guess strategy or or plan. Yeah, um, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I don't get to the point where I read out a blog post from two years ago and turn it into a podcast. No, I don't do that. <laughs> but I take certain things that worked well and I'll re-energize them uh, and and repurpose them in that. And way. I'll give you one that you can do real quick. I'll give you one one freebie. Yeah, take a take a blab that uh, um, a blog that you did a year ago or two years ago that's still relevant today. Take what Chris said and just literally take four or five points from it and go make it into a Periscope. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yep. Then that's when very you're cool. done with the Periscope, yep. upload it back to the original blog and put on the bottom, I updated this with a video now and what you've discovered and maybe you've updated the information a little bit to bring it more current. Yep. And because you did that, that whole blog from a year ago now becomes current and gets retweeted out and goes even further. Yeah, I love that. And you know what, too? I'm really big into bringing things to life. That's what I teach people, that you need to stand out because specifically on Facebook, so many people just scroll. And if everything looks the same, no one's going to connect. But it just needs to stand out, like Chris was saying, be the yep. favorite. And I think by doing that, Robert, yeah. now it's going to stand out. They might have saw it last year, and now they're going to kind of re-resonate with it. Is what it also word? does is because you just added video to the blog – yeah. And now the SEO is picking up video on that blog and it's going yeah. to raise it back up again. I like that. That's right. a great That's idea. That's what I'm talking wow. about. It's, it's all the yeah. time you're ta taking an over and I'll take it mm -hmm. further. The following week, have a blab yeah. discussion about that, that particular post and then add the blab to the bottom of the blog. That's cool. And not only that, but I mean, I've 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 taken several concepts, and and one of the things you see me quite do quite regularly is I'll get onto Periscope for five or six minutes only to talk about the fact that a brand new podcast has just gone live. I've so seen I've seen a, that. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll be like, you know, hey, I just wanted to let you guys know that this week on Upreneur FM, we're talking all about the importance of building an online community and what it can do to boost you, your personal brand, and your business as a whole. I want you to head over right now and check out this show because it's going to blow your mind to bits. Yeah. Before I go, however, I got time for three questions on building communities. I've go. seen that, yep. I take that questions, right? And then right at the end of the scope, I give one more CTA and send more people over to my hub which is chrislucker.com. Now, now I know now I know why lunch. you're the favorite. Now I know why you're the favorite. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was my good looks and charm. You're very Am funny. <laughs> you are very very funny and real. Like no, seriously. Just the real Funny, everything comes like whatever is on his mind just comes right out, and it's very. Oh funny. yeah, no, I don't, I don't hold back. No. <laughs> Sometimes it gets me in the trouble, but generally yeah. speaking, yeah. I, I stay relatively safe. Yeah. But very because cool. honestly, and, and to wrap up, because Robert, I've got to leave after I this. Know, buddy, I know, but I know. To wrap up, I want to clarify that you know what, what you said just there is is it that that's for me. That's what I do. I want to become someone's favorite for the right reasons, and I often say that you've got to look to market yourself like a magnet. And when I say that, I mean, you got to attract wow. the best and repel the rest. You I like attract that. the people. You attract the Correct. people that are what you are all about and the people you truly want to work with. Yeah. And you push away those that aren't going to spend any money with you, that are going to sign up for your free ebook and then never open up another email that you ever send them. We yeah. don't need that kind of BS in our, in our lives. Those, yeah. you know, because these numbers balloon. I got 51 something odd thousand followers on Twitter, I think. I don't know. How many? Come on. 50 are really. They're all following everything. Of course, they're not. I'm probably yeah. lucky if I've got a thousand people really looking at my tweets properly. Yeah. If I'm lucky, if I'm lucky, yeah. and I'm well aware of that fact. But I know, I know that if I put a little bit of Chris into everything I do, what you see is what you get. And if you like it, you carry on getting it. And if you don't, you'll tune out. And I'm absolutely fine with that. Yep, exactly. Sandra, I remember the. Coming thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thanks I want to wrap it up with him. So. We'll talk nice to, to meet you, Sandra. Oh, nice to meet you too, Chris. I'm going to fly away. X me out, nice. Robert. You got it. <laughs> if I said it.
All right. So, Chris, I know you got some appointments and stuff to do. Um, I've been putting in the chat. I'll put it in again. Everybody should go to chrisducker.com. What can they get on there real quick? What can they sign up for? Man, they can get my, obviously, all my blog content, all my podcasts. You can find out a little bit more about the book. You can find out more about Upreneur. If you can go, actually, you can go to chrisducker.com forward slash Upreneur if you're interested in the mastermind. Um, and, uh, yeah, generally, just what I'm all about, my vibe, and, and how I help people. Simple as that. Any new classes coming up soon, or is Upreneur just a continuous thing? Upreneur is a continuous thing. You know, we're adding content every single month. So we have exclusive proprietary interview format uh, video stuff that we put in there. We highlight one of our members every month with a video interview with myself and one of our fellow Upreneurs. We do process blueprints, which are kind of like infographics on steroids, where they literally take you through, um, you know, a step by step process. So we've had things like, how to write a blog post and market it effectively, or how to start your own podcast, all these things literally step by step. Because I found that if if you have those things to begin with, you you generally will you'll you know succeed a lot faster if you have a step by step process to follow. We do those every month and we also do like two live mastermind calls every single month as well uh, just for members only where they can get to grill me and each other and uh, then obviously we have our private forums in there as well which are on fire every damn day they're insane so uh and yeah what's the it, name of your uh, uh podcast if they were going to go now where is it on itunes is it on your website yeah, on itunes stitcher everywhere it's it's upreneur fm upreneur fm perfect perfect chris i can't thank you enough for coming on I can't thank you enough. I mean, this is, like I said, my second real blab. It was I a lot of fun. I got you when you were down. <laughs> you got me when I was down, man. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I did the right thing. I said, I'm so sorry that happened to you. You know, I feel you bad did. for you. I said, hey, why don't you come on? I'll do one. <laughs> I think, you know, it, it, but, but it just goes to show you, though, honestly, I mean, to give you props here as, as we wrap up, it goes to show you that, um, you know, when you know your job, everything becomes so much easier. Um, and, uh, you know, last month I was hanging out with Andrew Warner and, um, he, you know, from Mixergy and he's yeah. an incredible interviewer and I was asking him how, and he's had me on his show before and he gave me the grilling of my life. And I, I've never been interviewed like that since or before. And, and I said to him, you know, your job, like when somebody knows their job, it's the highest compliment that you can give them is to say that to them. And as a social media expert and coach and provider of, of services, Robert, you know your job, man, because you were watching the airways, you were seeing what was going on, you were interacting at just the right time. My very good friend, uh, David Merman Scott, who wrote the New Rules of PR and Marketing, he's done like five different versions of that book, great book. Um, he calls it news jacking, where you kind of jack the news and jump all over it at the right time. And you kind of did that in a way. And you did. You got me when I was down. You got me when I was pissed. You gave me the benefits to come on this show and to share some knowledge, which was what I wanted to do in the first place when I was stood up with those two podcasters. And um, you closed the deal all via Facebook. And I got you in three days. Messages. We didn't have to book a month in advance. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because mo Monday, Monday for me, because Sunday night there in the US, Monday morning here, Monday for me is generally a blank day for me because it's my content creation day. Uh, but I that's thought, you know what? My busiest day. That's my busiest day. That's my coaching. Yeah. Day. Well, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not busy. I'm just saying I don't do any interviews. So there's no, not no, a lot I'm on the schedule. All day Monday. I have coaching calls ah, all day okay. Monday to start the week. I like doing it right. early in the week so they get moving. Get moving. There you go. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, so for me, it was a pleasure to be on, and uh, we'll have to I, I do like it what again. you're doing. Yeah, we will, absolutely. Definitely. But I will definitely, I'll contact you, and we'll, we'll do a Skype. I'll get you all the info so you know how to work the, the blabs and everything else. Appreciate it, brother. All right, I thank you again. Thank you, everybody else, for joining me. And next Sunday, we'll have another person on. I'm working on some more people, so I take care, and everybody, peace out.